Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and I'm back. Yes, having got a bit closer to the pandemic than I'd originally planned, <laughs> uh, I am largely recovered, uh, but I'm not fully all the way there yet. So I'm going to break myself gently back into the swing of things by doing a bit shorter a video than I often do, uh, focusing on one of the many sets that I've bought while I've been off. <laughs> Well, the good side of being off, uh, good for the channel and probably less so for my wallet, is that I've been buying lots of Lego uh, to fill in the time. And uh, I've treated myself to some of the brand new 2022 uh, city sets at full price. Ooh, <laughs> some of the Marvel sets and the boutique hotel you already knew about and I've built that. So not a huge sort of value haul but lots of little things that have given me uh, a lot of pleasure. And one of those is this one, the 60314 Ice Cream Truck Police Chase, which I think is a really good deal for £25. Uh, you get a police car, which we'll move on to later, this wonderful ice cream truck with the sort of 3D cone uh, gun on the top that we'll also come to soon, which has got a great colouring, I think. Uh, and my favourite, these two wonderful crooks dressed up in ice cream outfits absolutely fabulous. Uh, so I think that is a really good set. Um, and I nearly didn't get this set because I thought, well, I've already got an ice cream van with a great big cone on the top, being the 70804 ice cream machine from the Lego movie. Uh, but then I realised I don't actually own that that set, even though I'm sort of very familiar with it, because I just got the cone to stick on top of my ice cream shop uh, and the minifigure employees. So essentially, I don't have one. So that gave me full permission to go ahead and buy this one. And it was only after it arrived that I realised I did already have an ice cream truck, the one from last year, the 60253 uh, City one. Uh, but anyway, this one is got uh, a bit of a crook theme, and I can put this as a result in my uh, crooked fairground which will be right at the other end of the city from my other one and quite frankly we won't notice the fact that we've got two i mean not every city just has one ice cream truck after all and besides i needed quite desperately these wonderful ice cream costumes as i've already discussed and there's a third one as well actually that i'll have to get in due course either by bricklink or by buying the set um, which is green and that's part of the 60328 beach lifeguard station so, uh, yeah, I might have to get that as well. Uh, and starting with these minifigures, I think if my one criticism is that they're kind of too good, <laughs> and that might be a weird criticism, but basically I really like the sort of crook outfit that's underneath uh, this uh, costume. And you even get some wonderful sort of blue hair for the blue lady, and you get a nice pink hat for the pink guy uh, with his wonderful chain. I mean, you see that sort of chain around his neck. And therefore... I kind of want to show off those uh, sort of torso prints and so on and not have them wearing the costumes as well. So it might be that I have two crooks wearing the ice cream costumes sort of uh, beckoning customers in. Uh, and then I have these guys working in and around the van as well with their wonderful uh, costumes on. But uh, yeah, I really need to do both. Uh, and that brings me on to a minor, minor, minor criticism of this set. I mean, Jan got his way in the sense of uh, them being included with hair pieces as well as costume pieces, which is always something he's gone on about in his reviews, if you watch him, uh, which I do agree with is a good thing to have sort of both options for each character. Uh, but what I really liked about recent city sets when they're wearing these sort of crook masks is that they've got that on one side of their face and a regular non-masked face on the other side. So it means they could sort of be uh, looking relatively normal, but when they're doing their crimes, you'd sort of flip them around onto the other side. But as you can see, that one's got a mask on both sides. And this guy has only got a one-sided face because of his cap. Uh, and that has the mask. So we can't use them in a non-masked way. And that's kind of bad for me using them in the fairground in a sort of more normal setting because, well, why are they wearing masks? So anyway, that's a, a sort of positive that we've got the extra pieces, but a negative that we can't sort of turn on and off their sort of crooked uh, sort of faces. So that's them. Uh, but this is a wonderful little build of an ice cream truck. I absolutely adore the colouring of the sort of pink stripe, the light blue, or rather medium azure, uh, and then the lime stripe. I really like all the stickers all over it. I love the sort of uh, uh, big engine air intake on the front. 
One mind criticism is why they would add a mask onto their innocent looking ice cream van to make it look like it's got crooks in it. I'm not entirely sure about that, but otherwise I'm okay. Uh, and it doesn't have a lift off roof, partially because it needs to be very stable to operate the weapon on the top. So we do have this opening door and that's pretty cool as well. But then it just comes to my other minor, minor gripe, which is that we've got that sort of panel piece in there that you can probably see in tan that holds onto the legs uh, and then a grill piece. They aren't actually firmly attached to the base of the vehicle when they're in there. And as a result, they kind of flap around. And because of these costumes, when they're wearing them, if you put somebody into that sort of gripping piece, then they're facing the front rather than out the window serving customers. And I just really don't like that very much. So I don't quite get what's going on. I think I'm going to remove both those pieces so I can actually attach uh, a minifigure the old fashioned way <laughs> onto actual studs uh, and kind of have them facing and leaning out the window. I'll probably get rid of that computer screen as well because that's for the sort of surveillance of whatever they're breaking into. But yeah, that is a really good and interesting looking um, vehicle. I really like the stickers on the side as well. And that brings us onto the gun, which looks fantastic even when it's closed but has these wonderful new, or at least new to me, splat pieces. And you can kind of fire them. And it's pretty good actually, if you get a good sort of grip on it by holding on the front while you push on the back. And yeah, I really like those. Uh, and it's a really vibrant and interesting piece here as well in pink. And then we also get one in the lime color and in the medium azure. So there's actually three to play with, which is a really good feature as well. So I really like that, the opening window, the blue wheels, absolutely love it. Then as side builds, we get the ATM machine, which I'm gonna take apart, which is why I haven't put the stickers on because I've got my own plans for ATMs around my city and a large uh, proportion of them are going to be for the Asteroid Bank. I still need to fix that sticker. So basically I'm gonna go for completely different branding from this. So I've kind of kept the ATM sticker to one side. I might use it, I like the sticker very much. Uh, then you also get this uh, sort of box for the tools which can go in the back there on that jumper plate and this great big chain so we can wrench the uh, ATM out of the wall huh, like that so that's all very good fun for the set but not needed by me uh, and then we move on to the other major part of the set which is the uh, police car now, I don't really like this police car just because it doesn't really fit with the other police vehicles in my city. And I kind of like to get sort of almost one year's worth of, of, say, police vehicles or fire vehicles or whatever. So they all look roughly the similar rather than mixing and matching them. And this one really doesn't fit uh, the um, sort of look I'm going for. So this is how it looked when it came out of the set. And it's a bit chunky with these white bricks. I'm not too sure about it. And it had this wonderful <laughs> box of... Uh, kind of, well, tire spikes, sort of shredders on the back that it could kind of tip out. And uh, you can see that in action on the inside of the instructions where they have these sort of strange sketches now. They're not done in the same style as they used to be. It's almost like it's been pencil drawn. But anyway, that would sort of tip out and drop the uh, spikes on the back to uh, shred the tires. So that's there. Uh, did somebody say shredder? No, no, we didn't say shredder. We said shredding. Uh, and here they are in the box. I, I really like those. So I have to see if I can use that box of tire spikes somewhere else. But they don't look like the sort of official ones that the police would use to me. They look like more like uh, something that a baddie would use. But that's good because my city is absolutely full of baddies. So I'll be able to use that no problem. So yeah, no need for you, Shredder. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is the police car with the police bits taken off uh, and I'm not going to keep it a convertible like this it looks very unfinished this is just me having ripped off all of the police bits and the most notable of those is these which are just sort of stacked here which are all the new uh, vibrant yellow as it's called by Lego pieces which I've swapped directly for grey ones here in this sort of stripe at the bottom so there's one buried in the back as well and one on each side and I wasn't very interested in these when I saw the pictures. I thought, yeah, so what? It just looks like yellow, but slightly brighter. But that's before I realized how much it glows uh, because vibrant yellow does fores under UV light. Uh, and indeed, Bricklink doesn't call it vibrant yellow, which I think is a bit of a rubbish name anyway as well. Uh, they call it the much more appropriate neon yellow. Uh, and if I turn off my filming lights just briefly, and bring in my UV torch, you'll see what I mean. I mean, wow, 
that is absolutely glowing <laughs> crazy matt it's like it's glowing in the dark but in the daytime when it's got uv light shining on it I, I mean you can barely see it like that through the camera can you so that is absolutely amazing now the only downside to this is that there aren't many pieces that i can use in my undersea setting for example where i will be having uv light uh, in this color yet so hopefully they keep making more pieces that are more appropriate uh, to using sort of for plants and so on rather than just sort of boring old two by four tiles uh, sorry plates here uh, so you can see these are all the pieces that are available uh, to date and there aren't that many so anyway that is a really good and interesting new color rather than the boring thing i thought it was but back to the car let's push all of these guys back uh, I just basically wanted to make it into a normal sort of six wide sports car. So I basically raided all of my parts. I didn't buy any parts specifically for this. I just used what I had. I basically went into my uh, bags that I keep all of my loose sort of curved slopes in and so on. And just thought I'd fill in the gap in the front that I removed the white stripe from. Changed that big sort of clunky section of white bricks for some slightly less uh, chunky blue ones. Uh, and I got one of these four wide kind of roof pieces, uh, in, but in blue rather than the one that came with it in white. Uh, and then I also had one of these six wide ones, which is usually used in a truck. And I just thought it was pretty good for the back, actually, turning that into kind of a sort of smooth beveled edge on all sides. Uh, but that wasn't enough. So I thought I'd add this whole setup here again, just completely out of spare parts for my bit boxes that I could just put on the back and be a rather impressive kind of whale tail type spoiler. And I think that looks rather special. Uh, and then I thought I'd add a number plate because I don't like seeing cars without number plates because it makes the ones with them look a bit weird by exception and replace the blue lights with more red brake lights. And I think that looks much more appropriate like a sports car, even though the engine would be in the back and I've kind of put an air intake on the front. Well. I'm sure some do that, <laughs> but I think that looks really good. And that can now be our vehicle of the week, I suppose, though I'll be bringing that in as well. So I guess we've got two. <laughs> so really what we need to do is bring this into the roads of Brick Nottingham, this and these two guys into the great big heap of stuff that needs to go into the uh, pile waiting for the fairground. Uh, but I had more ideas than just that because I was looking at these pieces and although this fires very well, I'm not going to be doing that every day. And I was sort of fascinated by their interesting shape. And I thought they kind of could be used as maybe splats on a paintball sign or something like that. Or maybe they could be sort of bell shapes or something like that. Uh, and then when I looked at them more, I thought, actually, it kind of looks like the shape of the ghosts on the Pac-Man game. You know, when you've got Pinky, Blinky, and whatever the other two are called, uh, chasing Pac-Man around a computer screen. Uh, and if you don't know what Pac-Man is, kids, it's a arcade game from the 1980s, which was incredibly addictive and incredibly popular, actually. Uh, it's one of the most successful games ever, I think, uh, before all the more recent ones. Uh, and, yeah, you basically had to avoid these ghosts. And then when they turned, uh, when you took a big pill, and turn them into edible ghosts, you could eat them and get your own back. So that's what they were. They'd be chasing you around a maze. And I thought, well, I'd need to add some eyes to make them look appropriate. And fortunately, I've got quite a lot of eyes in the sticker sheets uh, for the uh, Haunted Fairground uh, uh, Hidden Side set, where there was these ones, that had loads of little eyes that I've been chopping up uh, to make little individual eyes because I used them loads of them uh, and thankfully I was given loads by uh, fans of the channel who sent some more in uh, to make that really haunted doorway which was just covered in eyes uh, as part of my haunted subway station if you remember that but as you can see I've still got quite a few left so I've been kind of cutting them out which is sort of cheating trimming them around the outside very carefully to make dun 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 <laughs> little Pac-Man ghosts and isn't it fortuitous that we were given <laughs> three different colours uh, as part of this set. So what I'm going to do is add that set of eyes that I've already trimmed round onto the pink one. So then we've got a pink, a lime, and a medium azure ghost to chase a Pac-Man. And I think that'll look rather fantastic. Now, for the Pac-Man himself, because they need a Pac-Man to chase, I've just done a very simple three-quarter yellow tiles, because that's how simple he was. He didn't even have an eye. 
uh, on a black round plate. And I think I'm going to make all of these into a 3D sign for my arcade. Uh, now, my arcade does have an incredibly cool and huge uh, Space Invader as its 3D sign. So I reckon this will be a little billboard somewhere else in the city, uh, kind of pointing towards the arcade. Uh, and it will still look really good. And I'll just have to find an appropriate wall, flat surface, or maybe mount it on some poles or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of pointing in the right direction. So I'm going to put those eyes on the pinky one. Because <laughs> there wasn't actually a green one, I don't think, in the original. I think it was blue. Can't really remember. Yeah, I think it was blue, pink, orange, and red. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to sort them out, uh, and then we can kind of mount them on a sign and put that in the Lego room as well. All right, so I've done the third one, and this one I've done with the eyes sort of looking a bit forward. I've got one of them looking down and one of them kind of cross-eyed, so I think that's good variety. And these green eyes really do pop. And you may not have that sticker sheet, but if you did get this set and you wanted to make a uh, Pac-Man 3D design, uh, you've pretty much got all the parts already. You could just do some white circles uh, in a sort of postage sticker or something like that and just dab on the pupils uh, with a Sharpie marker or something like that. And it does occur to me that I now need uh, a bullet for the gun on the van, but I'll just have to put in a regular disc. Uh, but that just looks absolutely fantastic, if you ask me. So I have rustled up this as a sign which has just got some jumper plates on in black and normal black tiles and some of these really old arrow tiles that I happen to have lingering around that sort of suggest you should go that way and then down into the arcade. So I can then place these ghosts on the jumper plates that I've included. And this was a very sort of impromptu build, but once I did it, I thought, oh my word, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Look how much it pops against the black. And there's the little Pac-Man running away desperately. Because he can't be going that way because they're in full ghost form and they'll kill him. So there we go. How about that? Oh, that is absolutely fantastic as a 3D sign. I mean, not only is it 3D, not only is it incredibly bright and colourful. I mean, it's absolutely vibrant. But it is, if I dare say it myself, uh, an incredibly clever use of a very regular and normal piece in a very clever and intuitive way. So, yeah, it's nothing like praising yourself, but nonetheless, I think in this case it's worth it. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, all of this uh, up to the Lego room. And the most important thing is to find the best place for this to really show it off. OK, so in the Lego room. And I've got the ice cream van kind of in a holding position in the semi-completed fairground. Yes, I know. Still no progress. <laughs> Must get on with that. Uh, there is the blue car, which I think looks really good, given that it started from arguably an unusable police car, from my perspective, and a few random pieces that weren't being used. Incidentally, the police 1x4 bricks have just been turned 180 degrees, so they're sort of facing inward, uh, so you can't see the wording on the inside of those, so they've been recycled as well. Yeah, but I think that's looking pretty good on that street in front of Fast Food Corner. Uh, I just added a few minor additions that were sort of in the queue, including these two sig figs that were sent in as one of part of my uh, subscriber hauls. Looking good there on the platform. I also added my fourth wheelbarrow, the lime one, <laughs> to my procession of workmen with wheelbarrows coming out of the old... Uh, demolished building, which I did a Toys R Us sign to just to make it uh, kind of nostalgic. Uh, yeah, and they look really good, actually. I will have to put some sort of debris in each of those uh, wheelbarrows, I think. And that reminds me, actually, a little bit of channel news is that the uh, eventual building for this site was going to be kind of a modular that I'm designing for myself. It's not really strictly following the modular rules, but it's going to be a huge building. Uh, and I said it was going to be a base plate and a half. And it kind of dawned on me that if I did something, a base plate and a half, that I'd have this kind of half base plate unused. Uh, and given the rule of density and, well, everything else and the shortage of real estate, I thought that was kind of a dumb idea. So I've decided to extend it uh, and make it two whole base plates big, this building, which will make it pretty much the biggest building, uh, the biggest single building in my city. Uh, and don't worry, it's not going to be loads of open space. It is jam-packed. Uh, the design so far, which I think is about three quarters complete. 
Uh, it's taking forever just because it's so intricate and complex. So it's probably going to be the most expensive thing I've ever built as well. Uh, and then we'll have to move all of this building equipment to another district. But yeah, that will be absolutely fantastic. So don't expect that anytime soon, but uh, it's definitely the most exciting thing that I'm working on. Right, which brings us back to today and our wonderful Pac-Man sign. Uh, and this is the Space Invader sign we've already got on the roof. So I can't replace that really, can I? Uh, so it needs to be an addition to that. And I was kind of looking in the neighborhood uh, for some sort of flat surface I can mount the sign on. And because my city is just so busy, uh, absolutely every flat surface is pretty much in use already. Uh, apart from whoop, the actual monorail line itself. And I thought, well, why not have a very elevated sign right above the place itself? So essentially, I've modified this black brick here, uh, which was kind of a two by eight brick, which was linking the stanchion with that sort of connection point on the underside of here to make it a, a two by 16 thing uh, with some bricks uh, or rather studs on the side. And that means I can mount a wonderful sign right above the. Uh, Hard to do with my left hand this. Uh, right above. No, can't do it. Can I? Yeah, there we go. Is it on? It's kind of wobbly. I think it's on. Right above the arcade itself. And there we go. How about that? And it's kind of now pointing down with that arrow right into the building itself. And you can kind of see it from a distance, which would kind of be the point. You'd be down the road somewhere like here, and you couldn't see the big Space Invader sign. So you'd be like, where's the arcade? And nothing says arcade over here more than some ghosts chasing a Pac-Man. <laughs> so yeah, that really pops. And it's totally out of the way in a really unusable space for anything else really, high above the pavement, above those people walking to the Comic-Con. Yeah, it looks really good. And I know I've praised myself already, but that just looks awesome. <laughs> those eyes and those colours. I think it just looks absolutely fantastic. So let me know what you think of that sign. Pac-Man plus ghosts. Uh, tell me if you've got that set as well, or if you're thinking about converting your police car. I think that was quite successful. And uh, otherwise, I think I will leave it there. But yeah, I'm just going to look at this for a while. <laughs> So perhaps not such a short video after all, even if it was a bit light in original builds, uh, but what we did build was very original indeed, I think you'll agree. Uh, and it occurs to me afterwards that this actually does have a very useful purpose as well, because it acts as a kind of brace for this very important structure here, which causes the tram to reverse rather than careering off the end of the line into the standing hole. So if it helps, uh, maintain that position, then it's actually got utility as well as form, <laughs> which is doubly good. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And if you want to send something into the channel, then you can to the usual address. And uh, I've already got a couple of packages uh, lined up there and we'll keep the PO box for at least another couple of months, I think. Uh, and next time Robin Hood Bricks will be uh, doing, I don't know what, probably the boutique hotel uh, kind of placement and review, just a little sort of run through of my likes and dislikes with it. Uh, I do think it's a very good set, incidentally. Uh, and then Wednesday we'll do a haul and then Friday, well, goodness knows what. Uh, but whatever we get up to, I'm sure we'll have a great time. So until then, see you.